An open source library known as libxml2 has been officially abandoned and marked as unmaintained. And what's really interesting about this is this little open source XML parsing library is used everywhere. It is used by Chromium and hence Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, VLC, FFmpeg, uh, Steam, VirtualBox. I, I think I have a couple more listed up here. Um, uh, uh, VLC, uh, Inkscape, Inkscape uses them. It's crazy. It's all over the map. And as of just a couple of days ago, this got marked as officially unmaintained. And it's this has kind of been in the in the works for a while now. There's been writing on the wall that the developer was pretty, <laughs> pretty burnt out and going to be ceasing development. Um, in fact, the readme for the project now reads, quote, this project is unmaintained and has known security issues. It is foolish to use this software to process untrusted data. Forget about forget about you know trusting important uh, data with this thing. Uh, no, 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 it's foolish to use it no matter what. <laughs> it's just it's just completely abandoned. But it's worse than that. It's worse than that because prior to it officially being abandoned, the README for libxml2 originally had this statement on it, which is pretty extreme. Quote, this is open source software written by hobbyists, maintained by a single volunteer, badly tested, written in a memory unsafe language, and full of security bugs. It is foolish to use this software to process untrusted data. As such, we treat security issues like any other bug. Each security report we receive will be made public immediately and will not be prioritized, end quote. Holy heavens. Now that's the warning that existed on libxml2 this time last week. Despite that, nearly every major piece of open source software under the sun had some form of reliance on libxml2. If you use the GNOME desktop environment or the KDE desktop environment, you use libxml2. Uh, uh, Chromium, uh, Edge, and a variety of other Chromium-based browsers, libxml2, FFmpeg, and VLC, uh, VirtualBox. I mean, it's on and on and on. The odds are if you have a, a Linux powered machine or any computer running Windows or Mac, you are using libxml2 in at least a good half dozen pieces of software on your computer right now. And when the developers of those individual pieces of software chose to use libxml2, they knew that it was, quote, written by hobbyists, maintained by a single volunteer, badly tested, written in a memory unsafe language, and full of security bugs. They chose that. In fact, if you go through the package repositories for uh, Linux, uh, for Debian, for Arch, for a variety of other things, and look for dependencies on libxml2, you'll find a huge number of dependencies. And in fact, if you really uh, 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 stretch it out and really dig really deep, I mean, you'll find thousands of them. It's all over the map. And this is all came from uh, one developer uh, essentially named w uh, Nick Wellenhofer. And if you look at the commit history for libxml2, he, he's not wrong. I mean, it is Nick Wellenhofer all the way down. Every now and then you'll have one person hop in. But as I'm scrolling through here, you can see it's it's just Nick Wellenhofer and then boom, another person will hop in. And then more Nick Wellenhofer, a wall of Nick Wellenhofer, pages upon pages of, oh, there's one person that's not Nick Wellenhofer. And then back to Nick Wellenhofer. Oh my gosh, two people named one guy. Peter, someone named Peter made two check-ins. And then it's just Nick Wellenhofer all the way down. And it's like that going back uh, for a very, very long time. And you find a few people here and there, but mostly it's Nick Wellenhofer. And Nick Wellenhofer is no longer the maintainer of libxml2. Now, other people have chimed in and said, oh, I'll maintain it. But uh, not necessarily people who have any experience with libxml2. 
not necessarily people who have any experience uh, maintaining large and mission critical open source software. It's just random people on the internet who are like, I'll maintain it, therefore it's maintained. Like, no, we need, you need, if, if software like this is relied upon by the, all the major web browsers, by uh, all the major office suites, by all the major desktop environments and on and on and on productivity tools, everything's relying on this. You need people who are working on it that know what they're doing. And the fact that uh, the guy that maintains this couldn't do it anymore because no one was paying him to do it. He was just volunteering his time. That is a, uh, a screaming indictment of the problems with open source right now. There is a huge amount of money in open source right now massive amounts of money there is just there's literally billions of dollars flowing through open source right now and the companies that are making massive off the charts profits on this i'm looking at you ibm and red hat can't spare some change some pocket change in between their rounds of discriminatory hiring practices and paying um, HR, DEI consultants hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, they can't find pocket change to support a developer building the libraries that are propping up everything. It is absolutely criminal. It's asinine that this is that this sort of situation is is occurring right now. Um, so to to Nick Wellenhofer, uh, I don't blame you for no longer doing it. Uh, I, I get it. To all the companies who build on this, including Google, friggin' Google. Where's Google at? They use they use libxml2 extensively. Are, where, where, where's Google at? Why is Google not plopping down some of their billions and billions and billions in revenue on making sure that the software continues to get developed? It's, it's crazy to me. It's, it's absolutely crazy that this is the state we're in, but yet here we are. Um, uh, you can go, go check it out. Uh, it's up at uh, gitlab.gnome.org uh, is where the libxml2 um, uh, repository is hosted. And uh, that's, that's all it is. And, and there's another thing. There's another thing. It's hosted right now by the Gnome Foundation. Now, and Gnome relies heavily on libx, libxml2. Now, what has GNOME, the GNOME Foundation, been doing over the last several years to fund projects like this? Nothing. In fact, they've been working, it seems like, terribly hard to lose money. Uh, they've been, uh, they hired a, a shaman to be their executive director. That failed spectacularly. They, they have one uh, little catastrophe after another. They alienate half of their, their user base. They, they go on rants declaring themselves as to be a terrorist organization called Antifa. Um, they, they attack people. They attack Jews. They attack, they attack, they attack conservatives. They go on just alienating people causing them to get less income, right? Because they're reliant on donations and corporate support. And whatever their leadership is doing, they're not doing what needs to be done to get that corporate support or to make sure that enough people are feeling good about the Gnome Foundation to contribute money, which would then in turn lead them to be able to fund the open source projects that they rely on, like LibXML2. So it's basically just a giant ball of uh, the foundations are failing and the corporations are failing and they're making sure that that open source is just it's got some problems like what we're seeing here. It's it's frustrating. It's really frustrating to watch this happen. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing me to do this sort of coverage. Go to Lunduke.com, click on links where you can watch the Lunduke Journal's uh, broadcasts anywhere. Uh, there's a podcast RSS feed, there's locals, there's Substack, there's X, iTunes, I, I don't care. YouTube, wherever you want to get the Lunduke Journal, you go ahead and get the Lunduke Journal there. It's all free and all available absolutely everywhere. If you want to support the Lunduke Journal, and uh, God bless all of you who do, uh, you can grab a subscription to the Lunduke Journal, a monthly, a yearly, or a lifetime subscription. Uh, again, links are all up there at lunduke.com. They come with some fun perks like MP4 downloads, and PDF ebooks and forum access and lifetime subscribers can be added to the Lunduke Journal Wall of Shame <laughs> by request only. I don't put anyone on here unless they ask, so I'm not I'm not doxing anybody. Uh, but if you want to be added to the Lunduke Journal Wall of 
awesome smelling and wonderful people uh, of course you can and here wall number two has recently been added added and all of you go to helping make the lunduke journal possible without any corporate support notice the lunduke journal never takes any income whatsoever no no not even a penny from corporate sponsors uh, I don't run ads in the middle of my shows. There's no, this this episode of London Journal is brought to you by Square Fluke and Flogging or anything else. Well, now, actually, that's not true. Because one of the lifetime subscribers to the Lunduk Journal wishes to be known as Square Flugenflagen, T TM, and is now on the lifetime wall. So I guess technically, the Lunduk Journal is brought to you by Square Flugenflagen. So... <laughs> there you go. You, you got me on that one, guys. Um, and uh, uh, lifetime subscriptions are uh, through the end of December, 89 bucks, which is uh, crazy cheap. It's like over a third off. Uh, and there's also 50% off monthly and yearly. It's all up on Lunduke.com. Click them, click them, and it's awesome. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast. <laughs>